124 years ago this week, the then District of Alaska was appointed its first governor. Yeah, the date July 4th, 1884, U.S. President Chester A. Arthur named Republican John Henry Kincaid of Nevada to serve as our governor. But as author Laurel Downing Bill tells us, it wasn't long. Uh, he wouldn't serve for long. Serving in the governor's office, Kincaid has the distinction of being Alaska's shortest governor. He served less than a year. So before we find out why, you should know he was from Nevada. And that said, Laurel, uh, was he at all familiar with Alaska at the time he took the job? John H. Kincaid, who had served as Nevada's governor from 1879 to 1883, had actually witnessed the transfer of Alaska from Russian to American possession in October 1867. He also was appointed Alaska's first official when President Andrew Johnson appointed him the first postmaster. Kincaid also had a trading post, and he was Sitka's unofficial mayor until 1872. Was all that experience enough, though, for him to be Alaska's first governor? <laughs> well, along with his personal possessions, with him coming north were several cases labeled canned tomatoes, the contents of which tasted exactly like scotch whiskey and produced the same effect according to a renowned Presbyterian minister of the time. So as governor of the District of Alaska, what were his duties back then? Well, like other early governors, there really weren't many duties for him to perform. His instructions were to inspect, report, and enforce a handful of contradictory laws without any enforcement powers. Sounds like a cushy gig for Kincaid, but it was anything but for him. <laughs> well, Alaska's main man uh, ended up breaking his arm, having a stroke, and getting into many heated disagreements with our renowned Presbyterian missionary Sheldon Jackson, who thought that Kincaid was a little too comfortable with the mining interests. So these disagreements that Kincaid had with him, this would more or less lead to his undoing. How so? Well, Kincaid, it was rumored, was responsible for having Sheldon Jackson arrested on trumped up charges just to shut him up. Jackson was jailed for impeding the access of a public highway when he had a fence and a building that he used for a school to educate Native children. And sources say that Kincaid and other officials did not want Alaska Natives educated. Well, this scandal gained national attention and many blamed Kincaid for the incident. When those false charges were finally dismissed against Jackson, Kincaid was politely asked by President Cleveland to return to Nevada. So he submitted his resignation on May the 9th, 1885, just shy of his first year in office. And that's it, less than a year. That's a lot that went down in less than a year. Yeah. Man. Yeah, one and done. Uh, next week in story time with Ann Phil, how a presidential visit led a sourdough from Florida to put Alaska's first streetcars on the road. This is a very interesting one. Uh, these streetcars were very colorful back then. Some interesting rides. Yeah, it's a cool story, as as they all are.